This video begins our treatment of XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. And it's not another programming language. It's just a text format for representing data. <clears throat> so we previously learned how we could work with files. We could read in files using an IO source. We could write out to files using a print writer. And we saw that we could store data in these files for use later those plain text files, what we might call flat text files, they work for, for things, but they have some challenges. And one of the big challenges of flat text files is that when you just go to look at them, unless you know the format that they're supposed to be in, they don't tell you much. And they're also not very flexible. Uh, they can be hard to, to read in and to parse through and to, to pull things out. And if the person writing the file make small mistakes, they can cause problems. XML is one format that works to, you know, hopefully deal with that some. The idea of XML, uh, if you've ever worked with HTML, they both have a common ancestor and they will look very similar. XML gives you a format for encoding data in text so that standard parsers can be used to pull things out. And that makes it more flexible than the basic text files. So let's go ahead and talk about what goes into an XML file. I'm going to create a file, call it sample.xml. And the way that XML works is we create tags. Now tags start with a less than and end with a greater than. And you have a name inside of your tag. So uh, I'm going to make this tag have data. There are actually three different styles for tags. This is what's called a start tag. This is an end tag. And every start tag needs to have a matching end tag. The end tag has a slash in it. And then you can also make empty tags. Where the tag ends with a slash. And that is, that is equivalent to a start tag followed immediately by an end tag. It's just a shorter way to, to write that. The combination of a start tag and an end tag, or an empty element tag, both define elements. And kind of elements are the fundamental unit of how you group data together inside of XML. Inside of your elements, as you can see here, I put stuff in between the start tag and the end tag. You can actually put whatever you want. So we can put some plain text inside of here. That plain text will is what we refer to as the content of, of the XML. Um, you can also add additional data in the form of attributes. So for example, let's create a tag called person. And this person has a first name. and a last name and maybe I want to put some other information inside of this person as well uh, possibly an address or phone number let's go with yeah phone type equals mobile Area code 123567890. And we could throw other things inside of them inside of there as well. Note that they have to be properly nested. So if my person tag starts here and end here ends here, anything that starts inside of it also has to end inside of it. So we have these attributes, which 
are <clears throat> have a name to them and then the value. The value is put inside of quotes here. Note that for phone, I decided to make it so that the phone number was content as opposed to being another attribute. I could have, I could change this. I could say, you know what, I actually want to have it so that the number is just another attribute on that. And then if I don't have any content, I can go ahead and make it an empty element by putting the slash there at the end. What if I wanted my content to have, for example, a less than in it? Well, there are certain special characters that because they're special to XML, I can't put in. So, for example, it doesn't really work to say three less than five because that less than is seen as the opening of a new tag. So if I want to do that, LT is represented by ampersand LT semicolon. Other things that you can represent in here, so that's less than, greater than is a GT. The ampersand, which of course since the ampersand is what starts all of these special uh, character sequences, if you want to actually create an ampersand, you need that. The uh, single quotes or apostrophes are special. So you can write one like that. And then double quotes can be written like that. Okay, so that's kind of a, a look at our XML. Uh, we'll come back in the next video and we'll pull down some data that is in an XML format and we'll talk a bit more about you know, how the data is stored and how you can use that formatting and just see the advantages that we get from using XML.